I really want to learn about ESG. I'm thrilled that today we have Helena Wasserman on the show, who is an angel investor focused on climate and sustainability. Not only that, she's an elected founder of the future in 2016, Forbes 30 Under 30 in 2017, and won the 50 most inspirational women in technology in Europe in 2017. I hope you enjoy the show, Helena. I've known for goodness, I think it's、uh, must be more than like 10 years, actually. Right,、uh, we used to work together at Techstars in London, and it feels like it's been ten years. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right.、Like. Nice to see you, Ty. Yeah, so you know, first of all, can you thirty-second、uh, background?、Um, you know, as an investor,、uh, what have you been doing? So I actually started my career、uh, in the nonprofit at the Clinton Foundation in New York,、um, and then I worked in tech for many years. So initially for Techstars, and then joined big data startup. Uh, that brought me out to Singapore. We raised money from Tony Fernandez, the founder of Airasia. That's what brought me out here initially.、Um, and then three years ago, I decided to go back to impact and sustainability, which has always been my passion.、Um, so I started as an angel sustainability investor.、Um, so I've done about ten deals、uh, to date,、um, and、uh, yeah, identifying these companies, bring in、uh, my network of investors. Um, and I've also been part of Top Tier Impact, which is a network of 600 impact investors and sustainability leaders that we built out in the last couple of years. So, so yeah, so that's a little bit of my background. You know, tell us a you know a bit of a flavor and style of、um, kind of your sustainability investments. So right now, when we say sustainability investing,、uh, we're talking about climate tech.、Um, so climate tech is basically a renaming of, of clean tech. Um, and、uh, things have changed quite a lot.、Uh, laws have changed. You know, they've passed a, a big climate bill in the U.S.、Uh, the cost of technology of wind and solar has gone down by about eighty percent in the last ten years.、Um, there's a lot of talent coming to climate tech as well, from crypto, from tech. So the whole sector is getting a huge boost,、um, and it's going to keep growing just because there's just such a necessity to transform. You know, every company. Uh, and a sustainable one. What do you think, as an investor, what kind of what style makes you kind of different compared to some of the other investors out there? Like you said, as an investor, you need to have an edge.、Uh, you know, why would people take your money in the first place?、Um, for me, it's really my network.、Um, so I have a very broad network of investors, and when I come in as an investor, I actually bring in、uh, my network. So we come in as a group of investors, as opposed to just me. Uh, so that's really the value I bring, and then、uh, I also create content.、Um, so that's also、um, value I bring as well. You know, being able to socialize these concepts and talk about them、uh, within my network. And then, you know, what are some of the current challenges in investing in in、um, kind of climate tech?、Um, and those challenges can include can include, I think, your specific investing challenges and or the kind of industry as a whole. Uh, challenges、um, right now. There's a huge need for what we're doing.、Uh, there's a lot of excitement. So I would say it's very much you know climate tech is is emerging as one of the hot investing sectors for 2023.、Um, now I would say challenges about finding the right partners,、um, and I would talk about more like bigger challenges in terms of wanting to make impact.、Um, I think that's really the the toughest thing. So yeah, investing is difficult, but if you really Care about making、uh, a big change. It usually takes a lot of time, right? Because from a, from the moment when you invest in the technology to the moment where it actually gets implemented,、uh, it takes a lot of time. So I would say, you know, real challenges is like how do you create change at scale?、Um, that usually takes、uh, doesn't take just an investment. It takes years and years、uh, and focus to actually、uh, bring a technology to somewhere where it's actually gonna make a real change. You know how how does scaling mean to you,、uh, and what do you need for you to scale your impact and for your you know your investments to scale their impact? You know, what we need is, of course, private investments are key、uh, to make the world more sustainable. But we also need policy changes. We need、uh, you know people to get involved、uh, at all different、uh, levels of society. So in the nonprofit as well, government level. So obviously, governments also have a huge role to play. You know, here in Singapore. They've just elected the first sustainability、um, director of the country. So it's the first time、uh, in history, actually, that a government has actually picked somebody to be the head of sustainability of a nation.、Um, so th- that's the type of government push that we need to actually see things changing.、Uh, 
because we can, as entrepreneurs, investors, we can work hard and, and make things happen from a market perspective. But of course, you know, the government stepping in is key to really get anywhere. In the sustainability sense, in, in, the, um, in the scene, in the climate scene, government can play a large role in terms of, I guess, policy, um, in terms of tax incentives. Yeah, I'll give you some examples. Um, and it's not just in climate, it's just in general, in whichever sector we want to grow, uh, government uh, push is key. So if you see the US, the Biden administration just passed the largest climate bill uh, in its history, injected more than $700 billion, the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which means like subsidies and renewable energies and you know all kinds of sustainability uh, verticals. So that is already driving things massively in the US and it's only been a few months. Another example is actually in Singapore. So, uh, the, you know, in Singapore, there's no agriculture. So they, in order to uh, have food, they actually need to start growing food locally. And right now, about 90% of the food is actually uh, imported from abroad. And so the government has decided by 2030, they're going to grow 30% of the food locally. So they need to go from 10 to 30%. And it's been incredible seeing what the government has done to make that happen in terms of vertical farms, in terms of growing, you know, uh, plant-based, cell-based uh, sectors and alternative proteins. So this is an example of like, you know, the government steps in and then it really drives the private sector. I mean, all alternative protein companies now are actually setting up shop in Singapore because they know they're going to get uh, tax incentives. They're going to get funding from the government, from Temasek. Um, and so that's an example, you know, the government steps in and then the private sector follows. So, so I guess one approach as an investor might be uh, to, to figure out actually which, which governments are pro-sustainability and, and, and kind of follow that ecosystem. Absolutely, especially to get started. And, uh, you know, what you're seeing a lot in alternative protein is right now companies are setting up shop in Singapore because of the reasons that I mentioned. But then they're actually selling their products in the U.S. because that's where uh, consumer demand is bigger. So absolutely following where, where government is really uh, supporting the ecosystem. Kind of, what would you say? You know, if if someone wants to start a fund in this particular space, in the sustainability space, what are some of the challenges and, and any kind of advice you would have? I'm not a fund manager myself. Like we said, I'm a sustainability angel investor, but I am in touch with a lot of people that are fund managers and specifically first fund managers. And uh, we're actually seeing in our sector right now, we're seeing an oversupply of climate uh, sustainability impact funds. Uh, and the demand is, you know, people are curious, they're educating themselves, but not actually deploying as much um, as we currently need. Um, so what I would say is before launching an impact fund or climate fund is to actually find a really strong partner, uh, whether it's a family office, uh, you know, somebody you know that's going to be a real partner, strategic partner, financial partner before, you know, jumping in. Um, so I think that's really key. And I think what we're going to see is this probably going to be, um, you know, funds are going to be merging because there's quite too many of them right now as opposed to the actual demand that we have. But I think that's going to change a lot because, like I said, because of the legislative push uh, of governments, whether it's the European Union, the US or Asia, things are going to be changing. And uh, that's quickly going to, you know, a lot of funds are actually going to get closed and uh, it's going to get much easier to raise. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your uh, time and thank you for uh, educating us. Thanks, Tag. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. 